begin recording and we'll dive in. So welcome everyone. Um, we're, today's the day that we're starting to experiment a little bit with, uh, with format. So we'll, we'll have a quick chance for any announcements that there are. Uh, then we're going to try zooming in on a specific group. And so uh, Dan Sosa's volunteers to, to kick that off with us with uh, task VT. Um, and then we'll still have time to do a basic check-in with each of the groups and see if there's any, any like key progress and blockers and make some room for a Q&A at the end. Uh, but uh, I'll start by just seeing if there's any, any kind of key housekeeping or announcements that people, people have that they need to share with the group. I'll say we've got, we've got a preliminary version. We're still, I'm still struggling to get one of the pieces going for the JSON for it, but um, we, we have an org chart that's, that's on the way that will be able to be updated more, more frequently. Uh, based off of our Google spreadsheet. So hopefully we can look at it, see where there's any discrepancies between it and what we're actually doing and, uh, and move forward from there. Um, outside of that, I'll, uh, I'll turn things over to Dan and we can do sort of a, a dive into what all is going on with uh, Task PT. Sounds great. All right, so good morning or good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to Task PT. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you where we left off with round one and then our thinking going into round two. So let me um, show you the screen. So to start the quick update, I just wanted to share our deliverable from round one. And the deliverable from round one was a tool to extract um, all of the drugs that are being either used right now or considered for COVID-19 treatment. Um, at all stages of the research pipeline. So whether they're being actually used in the clinic um, or they're being considered in experimental or even computational studies. So this way you can look up a certain drug, you can look for certain studies in which the drug is mentioned in the context of being used or considered as a treatment. Um, and then you can click on the sentence and you can find the context in which the sentence appears and you can see the abstract and the title of the paper that it comes from. So the point here is just to kind of enable the user, probably a researcher or somebody curating a clinical database um, to just explore the core 19 data set specifically for drug mentions and then look at the context in which these drugs are being used. There's a few other NLP features that we have here with this match quality that I won't get into detail about, um, but that, that's what we wanted for, for round one. So that's where we're starting here. Um, so that, you know, that went well and I'm going to present this in a couple of different places. So this is getting a bit of visibility, which is awesome. Um, for round two, then we wanted to brainstorm and collect ideas about where we could go from there. So I released this survey to the VT team, I posted on general, um, and I got a lot of great responses, primarily from the VT members, um, but a couple outside as well. And things I asked in the survey were just, you know, ideas that you'd like to pursue for the VT team, and then whether or not you'd be interested in being a project leader, because I'm definitely thinking about, you know, team substructure, I'm thinking about expanding our capacity by a lot, because we have so many people who are excited to get on board. And so I was, trying to gauge if people wanted to be leaders of the projects that they proposed. So I got those results uh, at the beginning of the week, compiled them all together into a spreadsheet. And so we have these different projects. Um, some projects were ideas we were kind of already starting to think about in round one. Some were totally new ideas. Uh, and then people identified if they were okay being a project leader. So we got down to this spreadsheet of ideas basically. And then as a result, um, assigning the project leads is actually kind of a very natural thing based on who proposed which idea. And uh, right now, a lot of the active, like, kind of like most active VT members are gonna be project leads for the next round and they'll form their own little teams of between say two to five people depending on their needs for their projects. Um, so I have these project leads here. And so that's, that's how we wanna go forward with the structure. Um, the other thing that I did, which uh, has been, you know, teased and floated around is that I created this system schematic for how the VT team kind of all flows together and interfaces with some of the pre-processing pipeline as well. So some of it is, this isn't fully realized and it's kind of like we need to uh, refactor the code from the notebook and bring it over to this kind of, you know, put everything in the GitHub repo. But just to, <clears throat> just to fly through this really quickly. Uh, at the top here, I've shown this is the raw core 19 data. This is Brandon's pre-processing pipeline up here, adding additional metadata, adding study design information. 
and I've tried to attribute the people who are working on these different parts of the pipeline. Um, then once we have all that, you know, kind of pre-processed data, it goes down a few different streams. So one stream is this, this is the drug treatment extraction tool for round one, and we want to make some improvements on that for round two, including improving the drug lexicon, making that a bit more high quality, thinking of more <clears throat> contextual information we can extract, et cetera. Uh, some minor changes and of course refactoring the code. Uh, so that's one path corresponding to one deliverable. These little bursts at the bottom are deliverables. Uh, the second path is looking at protein-protein interactions and more metabolic relationship or uh, molecular relationships from experimental literature. And so that involves, you know, identifying which proteins are mentioned, identifying the types of relations, et cetera. That would become a PPI knowledge graph visualization. Um, and then there are a few projects related to the clinical literature specifically. So one is it? Uh, one is extracting cases where adjuvant therapy is mentioned. So adjuvant therapy is not the primary treatment used for COVID-19, but afterwards, after you leave the clinic, you, maybe you have to you know, heal your lungs or you have, uh, you have to deal with the damage that's caused by the disease. And so they'll give additional treatment. Um, and so extracting which treatments are even being used for adjuvant therapy. Is it the treatments that you would give for like COPD or related like lung diseases? Um, or is it something different? just having some visibility about that um, is, is something that's important. Then extracting adverse events, extracting the dr different drug dosages being considered because a lot of drugs are being used off label, so there's a lot of uncertainty there. Uh, putting that all together to one dashboard that would be relevant, especially for pharmacologists, uh, that's this deliverable. And then the third thing is looking at more like the meta research aspect. So uh, for example, the Stanford serology study that had a, a lot of controversial um, you know, a lot of interesting discussion afterwards because people had uh, problems with the statistical rigor of the study. So we would be interested in focusing on like drug related, the drug related corpus, but looking for those kinds of evidence like uh, this is the one study on hydroxychloroquine and then subsequent studies were saying, no, we don't like uh, hydroxychloroquine. It leads to increased mortality for X, Y, or Z reason. And trying to identify those contradictory claims, one directly from the literature, but also another path that was proposed is looking at kind of Twitter data to augment that sort of sentiment analysis, which is especially interesting for academic Twitter because um, you'll have all these PIs arguing back and forth about the quality of the paper. So that, that's a good proxy for uh, quality, whereas, might, whereas it might be hard to extract that directly from the paper with NLP methods. Um, so that would correspond to a separate dashboard of kind of meta discourse. So we're looking at, uh, and then there's a couple more projects that are <clears throat> potentially in the pipeline for um, immunology and vaccines, which I haven't incorporated yet into this framework. So we're looking at five or six deliverables for round two, and I think that we have plenty of capacity in Corona Y to add more people on board and get all those things pushed out. Uh, as for consulting with domain experts, so I reached out to maybe six or seven people. I heard back from, for one, uh, from Maria Milano, who is a pharmacist, uh, she has background in drug design, and she's a medical scientific liaison in immunology. She gave me some awesome feedback about, you know, especially the pharmacology dashboard and adjuvant therapy extraction. Uh, she had great feedback and was very positive about these directions, so that was awesome. I also chatted with Randall, who is an MD and has experience with AI and uh, machine, like natural language processing, especially data mining of medical records. So he had great feedback from the clinical perspective about these projects. Um, and it was very positive as well. So uh, for, for me, it seems that these projects are useful. And as far as being coming impactful, it requires uh, authoritative like status of some of these tools. And I think that once Corona Y, you know, really crushes the Kaggle competition, hopefully that elevates the work that's being done here. And I think that'll help push these things along and you know get them the visibility that I think that the great work that all of our teams are doing deserves. So that's the vision of how that all plays out. And then the final thing I wanted to show is, so there's a natural way to divide this pipeline based on all the different teams. And so I've just highlighted the kind of chunks of the system that correspond to a team and a project. And just seeing how all those interdependencies fit together. Um, Jeremy leads this, this pipeline, uh, Arad and our Andrea leads here, et cetera. And who's kind of responsible for the, you know, putting together the final deliverable essentially. And then a couple more projects here that I need to, you know, discuss and potentially incorporate. So that's what we're thinking now. And um, 
in the immediate future, I'm meeting with all the team leads and we are going to start putting Trello cards on the board so that immediately, hopefully over the weekend, we, we have clear tasks with this is the input, this is the output, um, this is what the task is, and we can start getting people on board to build up the little teams for the different projects um, and just, just get started as soon as possible because you know two months will go by in a flash, so I want to just get going. That's what I have, guys. Uh, happy to take any questions. First, just to say that's absolutely incredible. I love the, the, the expansion and the thought and the coordination that's going on and putting all of the pieces together. It's amazing. So I'll, I'll ramble a little more in terms of what we can do organizationally to support that. Uh, but, but first, yeah, any, any other comments or questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, my, my question <laughs> uh, is uh, you probably know uh, because of the nature of your uh, work, a very specific terms for cells, for proteins, for maybe even like terms like SAS2 and things like that, that do not, you know, make much sense to me. But I know that these are also risk factor related. Maybe you have a pretty nice library of uh, very specific uh, biological or whatever, whatever they are called terms. And if we can kind of get this list, that would be absolutely lovely. Yeah. So for, for that sort of name entity recognition, um, a lot of that can come from UMLS because UMLS is just sort of uh, this, you know, it has a bunch of mappings between different ontologies. So we are on that. Mm -hmm. It takes time yeah, to run absolutely. code. Takes time, yeah. uh, and it's always much better if you have some initial input. You start building the extraction and ontologies around. Yeah, so I can share the specific so, ontologies that would be useful. I think you're thinking especially of gene ontology. It sounds like because you're interested yes. in gene and protein risk factors. So I can I can point you to where that would be, and you know how you can maybe get started there. Well, that would be lovely. Please. Sure. Okay, I'll, I'll private message you. Thank you so That's much. Anyone else? So I'll say, Dan, why don't we, on the, on the list of coordinators that we have going, um, we, can, we can get that list of people who are each of those sub-team coordinators, and we can do sort of a needs assessment with everyone to figure out, especially in terms of, of personnel, what, what sort of skill sets and people you need. And then we can try to both internally and externally actively recruit the people who uh, we may need. Totally. So when we have all those Trello cards in place, I think it should become obvious that we need two or five people, all with NLP skill or uh, subject matter expert for each sub team. Um, and, and I'm happy to help coordinate that. Yeah. And are you wanting that to all be on one board? Or are you wanting us to start being able to break off a few different sub boards for each of those different tasks? Because they look like each, each one's going to have a fair bit. Yeah, I would just put them all on the VT board. I think that that's fine. Yeah. I don't want to have a hundred Trello boards. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. No, that's that's amazing. Um, so yeah, thanks thanks for sharing that. And we're going to be trying to, to cycle through the different teams um, doing this. So maybe we can find somebody who would be willing to be sort of the, the Monday team. Do we have a team that would be willing to, to dive in on Monday and sort of share, share a bit of what's going on with them? I think we might uh, we'll be able to present something till then. It's going to be on okay, Monday, great. right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So if Monday, if you want to do that with the risk team, Maya, that would be great. Yeah, yeah sure. It would be lovely. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, we can just uh, give it some thought, uh, uh, Manuel and, and Christine, for for whether Tuesday, Wednesday, either of you would be wanting to present something for your team as well. Uh, let's jump straight into uh, to just brief brief summaries from the other teams as well. Where where you're at? Any progress? Any blockers? Any help you need? Why don't you kick things off for us, Maya? Um, uh, basically, uh, now uh, our primary focus for the next few days, uh, despite that, in parallel we do work with uh, ULMS and Mesh uh, at certain degree, which are medical dictionaries that helps to understand uh, terms and interdependencies. Interdep that's a very hard word with me, <laughs> for me. Interdependencies, ontologies, uh, kind of between these words. Uh, but uh, what is uh, search engine team, they work on the same direction, 
probably from a little bit different angle because we are more focused on risk factors. But now we decided that we will kind of read, first of all, our successful and, un and un unsuccessful results and read the annotations carefully. And we understand already that we should, for example, unfilter papers that are not peer reviewed, etc. Like it's already clear just from reading that there are a number of actions that has to be taken. And we need to shape a different type of analysis that will, that will help us to efficiently understand um, the similarities and differences between successful and, uh, and, and non-relevant uh, papers. So that's the focus. Great, and any, any blockers anywhere you need help? Uh, no, we are actually fine uh, so far. We have enough people. We have a quite nice uh, core team at the moment. Feels amazing. Perfect, great. Uh, Christine, how are things going over at Ties? Um, it's great. So we kind of just nailed down our short-term uh, plan. We are trying to uh, kind of build a data extraction pipeline to get um, you know data that's relevant to our topic. Uh, so yeah, we're in the process of you know just recruiting people to work on each task. Um, and yeah, so. Uh, and on the other hand, it's not like an immediate, but we're also thinking about integrating external data sets as well. So we might start to sort of curating what we have shared on the uh, different channels or, or just bring some ex external data. And I think we will try to also get in touch with uh, more domain experts, stakeholders uh, that's relevant to our topic. Oh, great. And do you need help with any of that? Or are there any things that you're blocked up? Well, yeah, so we do need to um, staff our little task groups. So that's uh, what I'm uh, working on at the moment. Okay. And Manuel, how are things over at uh, GEO? Uh, we have keep on discussing uh, our uh, goals for the second round of submission uh, and nailing down as we have been on the last days. And as I told you, until maybe Sunday or Monday, we won't be able to present exactly what we will be doing but we keep on progressing. Okay. Um, uh, communications wise, let's see, I'm not sure if uh, we have Tyler or someone else who's from communications in here. I think maybe we don't right now. Um, we're starting to talk about the, the podcast a little bit more and we're, we're thinking for the next four weeks, what we're probably going to do is have a bit of a focus on each of the different teams and try to help people outside understand what the different teams are and what they're about and what it is that we're working on as a way to, to sort of broadcast and, and get a little bit more, more both help and interest in what we're doing here. Um, we're, we're starting to try to pull things together for the webinar. We still need to set a date for it, uh, but we're gonna be doing a little bit of a call out to some of the different uh, domain experts so that we can see who might be interested in attending um, or, or in viewing it afterwards. Uh, we're, we're still, like I said, that word chart, we're aware of the fact that that needs to happen, so we're, we're trying to pull that together. We're also modifying our orientation material. Um, as of today, we've revised the beginning of the orientation document, and we're going to be ch switching around the email that people get when they first come on, just so that they read through some stuff before they jump straight into Slack, because I know sometimes it can be a little wild having people showing up, not knowing what to do, and kind of jumping around through the channels. Um, those are some of the key things as far as communications goes. Um, our main blocks are probably just that we could, we could use more people who are able to do some of the design side or some videography. Um, and w there's always a need for people who are willing to just do some of the random tasks. There's always some stuff that where we need going through the different Trello cards or pulling out information that's listed in different places or updating our organizational documents. So, so if anyone wants to help with that, then you can ping me afterwards as well. Um, we have a little bit of time left. Is there any, any Q&A, any questions that anybody has for anyone else? All right. Okay. Well, we'll we'll end it there. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll probably, you know, it'll it'll be the weekend coming up, and I encourage people to take the time you need to 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 rest and uh, and recuperate from from the work schedule we often have. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be seeing some of you around on the weekend, and we'll look forward, Maya, to to hearing about what all is going on over at Risk on Monday's daily call. Um, Christine, would you be up for maybe doing ties for the Tuesday? Yeah. 
Okay, great. And, we, and then we can and then we could do do something with Gio maybe on Wednesday or Thursday. Hey guys, a quick reminder from my end. Actually, we are going to have uh, a sync up with AI team. Thank you. Uh, in thirty minutes. Uh, it's going to be dedicated to two topics, actually. One of them is Slava has a number of questions uh, regarding how uh, these guys are currently processing and preparing data, like fundamentals. And second is going to be dedicated to Chinese papers. You know, there are a lot of Chinese papers uh, published, and uh, they will be closed for access within one month from now or even faster. So the goal is try to acquire these papers and ideally translate them, but this is an open question. So we need to discuss what can be done in collaboration with AI, with AI too. Just, um, uh, this, this meeting is on the public calendar, just in case you want to join, feel free. That's great. And also, and um, if anybody is wanting to help out, you know, Anton's been working with AI too to figure out what their needs are and how we can help with those. Um, so definitely, if you're not sure what to do, but are interested in doing something, check in with, with Anton around some of those yeah. things. Yeah, thank and you. He has a spreadsheet that will show, you know, what the different needs that they have are. So we can, we can try to organize that. All right. Unless there's anything else from anyone, we'll... Uh... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, Isaac, here. Um, obviously, this isn't as high priority, but we have started some work on both patient forecasting and forecasting disease spread. So, um, and we are doing not daily meetings, but bi-weekly and posting those videos. And so... Uh, I do hope, though, like once we get some of the more Kegel stuff set to maybe roll that out into a more high priority task, because I do think that's an important component of coronavirus research. Absolutely. That's fantastic, Isaac. Thanks. And just let us know, again, any resources that you're needing, especially in terms of people, in order to, to move that forward. And we can, we can help you out as best we can. Okay, sure. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.